afternoon. Welcome to Kigali Council on Foreign Relations. We're very excited for our conversation today, specifically for uh, the private sector community joining us and our sales council joining us. Thank you for joining us. And as you few ambassadors are also uh, on, online, thanks to your excellence for joining us. Uh, before I introduce our speaker and, uh, and our moderator, just two things as always. I'm, remember everybody. Uh, the first is for the first 20 minutes, we're on the record um, for the first conversation between our speaker and the moderator. And then for the last 10 minutes, when you go to questions and the answer will be off the record. So please start sending your questions as, uh, as, uh, as the conversation is going, is going in. And then we'll try to ask as, you know, as many questions possible as, you know, time is in short. So, so we'll try uh, our best, but without taking um, very much, uh, Lord Merlin, thank you very much for joining us. We're very, uh, very honored to have you today and welcome to Kigali Council for Relations and uh, our CEO of Iron Bank, our good friend Robin, the chair of bank, uh, the social bank of Rwanda <laughs> and, and a good friend of ours. Thank you very much for moderating the conversation and, and the floor is yours. Please uh, uh, join, start the conversation. Thanks, thanks, thanks for the introduction. and. Once again, Lord Marlon, thanks for joining us this afternoon. Um, we've, uh, we know a bit about the, the, the Commonwealth, the fact that we, there are a total population of 2.4 billion, 60% of those are under 30 years of age. To a top 20 emerging global economies, uh, of the top 20 emerging global cities, 50% are within the Commonwealth. Um, and uh, bilateral trading costs are a lot lower than uh, than trading in other um, within other trading blocks. You're well represented, well represented across um, all of the trading blocks across the world. But I think for those on the call this afternoon, um, could you give us a bit of background to the the council and what the Commonwealth Enterprise and Investment Council um, does for its, uh, its member states. Well, Robin, uh, thank you. And thank you, Yannick, for having me on. I, I'm so sorry to interrupt your holidays. Um, I, of course, am not on holiday. I'm working like a beaver to um, ensure great Commonwealth um, victories all over the, all over the world. Um, and it is a privilege to be uh, live in Kigali, where tragically, um, we're not going to have um, the Commonwealth Business Forum, which I co-host, uh, because of uh, this wretched COVID, which has set us back a lot. But hopefully it will be in the very near distant future. And my thoughts are with the Rwandan government at the moment, who put a lot of effort into um, delivering this event, which sadly will be delayed. But I'm sure when it happens, it will be great. It will be great for Rwanda. It will be great for Africa. And of course, it will be great for the Commonwealth. And Robin, sorry, long uh, winded answer. I'm getting to your question now. The Commonwealth uh, Enterprise and Investment Council was empowered by um, the heads of the then heads of state in Glasgow, where Tony Blair was uh, host and chairman. And it was to build business and uh, trade relations between Commonwealth countries and, of course, Commonwealth businesses. But we actually haven't restricted ourselves to that. We've taken Commonwealth brand, which is a trusted brand and well uh, thought of for the very reasons, uh, or some of the very reasons, Robin, you've enunciated. Um, and I'll come to some other good reasons in a minute. But we've taken that Commonwealth brand and we've recognized that countries like the Middle East, countries like China, and e even America, which rather disappointingly is not part of the Commonwealth, um, we we um, have taken that brand to those countries and uh, built trading links and business links with them. Ours is a networking organization. We're a not-for-profit commercial organization. So we're really only interested in delivery and performance and being judged on our delivery and performance. Uh, we're a membership organization. So uh, as I say to everybody, uh, if you want to play golf, want to learn to play golf, and want to use the clubhouse facilities, we're the organization for you. Uh, but if you don't want to do any of those, then don't bother joining. Because really, we're interested in building links with the Commonwealth, 
enhancing trade, connecting businesses to business, business to politics, and politics to business. That that rather interesting triangle, which uh, is curious enough, quite vacant uh, or quite um, a, a vacuum at the moment, which we are happily filling. Our work um, fits into two categories, really. One is what we do for the greater good of the Commonwealth. The Commonwealth Business Forum would be one of those, uh, one or two other major business events we involve ourselves in, like, for example, up and coming is the Expo in uh, Dubai World, World Expo, which we will be hosting a group of businesses to come to it uh, wearing the Commonwealth badge. And then we do bespoke things for our members. And our members, of course, are on the one hand countries. So uh, without giving away too many secrets, uh, we're working with the government of Maldives on a number of fronts. Firstly, tourism. Uh, secondly, uh, renegotiating their debt with um, China and um, one or two other financial uh, support that we can get to them. We are, of course, not negotiating those terms, but we're giving advice and connections to it. Similarly, with the government of Antigua, we're helping to um, develop their ocean uh, and blue economy strategy, um, which is proving very successful, which we're doing through the Caribbean. And finally, we're working on a green and blue uh, bond or finance facility for one for a better world that can help the small island states green and blue their eco uh, economies and for uh, 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 and, so, and that is out of Cayman so our work for, is bespoke we deal with um, uh, we, we just introduced a number of businesses into Nigeria for example we would be doing the same in Rwanda this week Ghana would be another thing. Really, this iteration of uh, the council has been going for the last seven years. And in that time, our membership has increased at a healthy rate. And even despite COVID, we've increased our membership. Uh, we've get, carried out webinars every other week, which range from webinars on sustainability, which we had recently with a Anglo-South African, who you might know, Robin, called Lewis Pugh, the great swimmer who is a uh, UN ambassador to the oceans um, and is raising the awareness of plastic in the oceans. So we've just done a webinar with him and others. They've ranged from uh, a superb one. We started with Mervyn King, who was governor of the Bank of England, who everything Mervyn said would happen in that webinar in um, April last year has turned out to be almost true. So it's wonderful. And of course, we've had leaders from countries uh, and ministers from uh, Rwanda uh, uh, as well. So it's been a real cross-section of activity covering uh, industry classes and, um, and political uh, dialogue. In, we've, uh, we've seen now that the, the meeting was supposed to take place, has been postponed for a second time. Um, I think the, the chair in office is going to get an award for the longest serving chair in office <laughs> as the postponement. But uh, um, I know there's a lot of lot of uh, people in Rwanda that are that are on this webinar that are, would be would be keen to know what would be on the agenda for the um, for when we do get to meet eventually, because I know the commitment is there that no matter what happens, um, Rwanda will still host the the. Um, uh, will host Chorgan uh, eventually. Yeah, well, we're, we're looking forward to uh, Rwanda taking over chairman. We're bored stiff with the United Kingdom government uh, <laughs> being in chair. Uh, <laughs> actually, we're bored stiff with the United Kingdom. I'm oh, sorry, it's on the record. So I mustn't, we can talk about that when it's off the record. Um, no, we, we're delighted uh, I, I, because I believe that the Rwandan government will um, approach with real vigour and uh, enterprise. So um, the business forum will uh, cover various sections. Of course, there'll be section one, which will be Opportunity Africa, uh, the investment opportunities in Africa. There will obviously be one on uh, fintech. There'll be obviously one on uh, health tech, uh, two of the 
main uh, you know, contemporary subjects as well as sustainability and the green agenda, which uh, fits um, uh, nicely into these new um, developments. Uh, those will be the four main themes. Of course, there'll be lots of uh, sort of sideshows, for want of a better of a word, uh, where countries will present their own agendas. Um, but uh, it, those will be the main uh, themes and people like the Lord Mayor of London will be attending. Uh, as, as for those who have attended beforehand uh, a a business forum in the past, will know that we basically have 35 heads of state. We have 35, 40 ministers of trade or business. We have uh, billionaires, multi-billionaires, and that excludes you, um, Robin. Um, uh, certainly excludes me, by the way and um, uh, business people from about 80 countries. So there's normally a huge turnout. There's no point pretending that uh, it's going to be difficult. Um, the uncertainty surrounding COVID and the extent of uh, that it will last for um, creates greater uncertainty, but we've got to get on with it. And we've got to make sure that um, Rwanda is, from our point of view, from the business forum point of view, is, is fully supported in delivering at what will be a stunning business forum. Um, you've used the, the term in the past, the Commonwealth um, Commonwealth advantage. Um, yeah. In, 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 that, in that context, um, what is the, the role? Does the Commonwealth Enterprise and Investment Council help um, or can the Commonwealth and Enterprise and Investment Council help bus the business community during COVID? Well, let's just talk about the Commonwealth Advantage, first of all. You hinted at it where it's 19% uh, uh, more um, uh, advantageous to trade intra-Commonwealth. You mentioned that earlier. But, I mean, think, you know, where the principal language is English, there is a basic rule of law that is British that doesn't necessarily apply in Rwanda, of course, who are one of the newer members, uh, but uh, over probably 48 of the 54 Commonwealth countries, there is a basic uh, similar rule of law. Uh, there is also that um, nuanced uh, relationships that we as countries have had, with it, whether it be through football, through cricket, through the theatre, through music, through um, education, all those sort of things that uh, as countries we've shared, which are very particular to the Commonwealth and uh, continue to be so. And also it's helped by, um, uh, you know, the, the education system having uh, commonality, particularly with the English language being the first alternative language at least. So those uh, create advantage, not having to have a translator when you uh, try and negotiate a deal, not having to, to change, you know, misunderstand the, the legal thing. These all make it competitive. As far as uh, your last point in your question about um, what we've done with COVID, we, we are not a, um, we're not a, um, we're not like the Secretariat who, who can intervene, intervene and help uh, it with nation, nations um, solving a health crisis. So we're not primary frontline solvers, even though we have um, uh, created links between the producers of the vaccines and some of our member countries. Uh, what we have done though is however, keep the home fires burning. And uh, through these webinar programs, we've kept contact, We've used, um, obviously, the internet uh, to great advantage. And on some of our webinars, we, you know, we have 800, 900 people. So th there already there is a community that's been expanding and developing. And we're rather proud of that. And, and uh, there have been business deals and business relations that have been struck up uh, from it. I should just say that um, even despite COVID, we have opened... Uh, two new offices in the last uh, month, one in Bangalore and one in Gibraltar, which I opened 10 days ago. So we now have offices in Ghana, uh, Nigeria, uh, Gibraltar, Malta, the city of London in the Guildhall, um, the West End of London, Kuala Lumpur, Sri Lanka, 
Bangalore, and um, of course the Cayman Islands, which serves the Caribbean. Um, I want to just maybe move away from that and just ask you, in, in, in as your experience or your experience as a businessman, um, we use words now like new normal, unprecedented times. Um, we're over the first year of, of COVID. Um, some of the countries are faced with third wave of the, of the pandemic. Um, from your perspective, what do you think business leaders could do to mitigate risks um, of, of their businesses to, to COVID? What have you perhaps maybe seen across your vast nest network of 54 countries? Well, I mean, actually, Robin, it's a question I should be directing at you, really, because you're hands-on running a, a, a major corporation and will have a view on it. And your view will almost certainly be different from others. And what we're finding is there's a, a, a wholly different uh, uh, approach to it, to, to it uh, depending on sectors. I mean, if you take in the United Kingdom, the banking, the... the um, wholesale banking sector, they are demanding their staff come back to work on the 1st of September and fill the offices. If you take the retail banking sector, they're getting used to a, um, a more uh, part in, part out, part in the office and part out of the office approach. And certainly some of the uh, major insurance, uh, retail insurance businesses are adopting the same pattern. Um, so I, I think it's, it's, it's varied. I think uh, each business looks at it in a different light. My own view is uh, if we're going to get going again, and uh, so much of business is about social relationships, uh, certainly at the front end of it, uh, then we have got, then the new normal will be returning to the old normal, which is travel, which is face-to-face, um, uh, and you know regular contact through zoom but face to face not as much travel as there was not as much uh, face to face because some of it can be done without but i don't really think you get a feel for uh, a meeting in the same way that you would um, sitting you know uh, physically together and i don't know whether that's your view robin what, what's your view on this no, I, I agree with you in, entirely. There are elements that can and could benefit from the 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 the, the, uh, the massive leaps we've done with regards to uh, online communications. Um, these uh, internet providers, from um, uh, Microsoft Teams to Skype to uh, Zoom, etc., have made, and I think some of the lesser essential travel, you'll see a reduction in, but uh, having worked in wholesale banking and investment banking in the past, I believe that that is about relationships and these, we cannot, we cannot form them over, um, uh, over the internet. You need to be physically present um, to be able to do that. So I do believe that there are going to be elements that will benefit from, uh, uh, from the, the new way of doing business, but there are going to be some other some of the, the more traditional methods are going to have to uh, uh, remain. And I, I still think that conferences uh, will, will prevail and the, the, the money that we've invested in Rwanda will be put to good use in terms of the, uh, the bed nights that we have available for sale, tourism, and then the, the conferencing venues as well. Um, you can't play golf over the internet. That's uh, <laughs> very true. So I think from a, we've got a, we've only got a, a few minutes left. So let me quickly ask maybe more specifically on the, on the trade side. Um, you were the, the, the prime minister's trade envoy between 2012 and 2014. Um, what is your, your, your views on the impact of um, Brexit on um, trade with, with Africa and the UK and how, has the new board of trade shaped the direction that's uh, been taken with regards to uh, trade globally? Yeah, well, um, Brexit is going to have an effect, uh, a two-way effect. Firstly, those countries that have traditionally used uh, London or the United Kingdom as their entry into the European market uh, will 
probably um, now start looking for alternatives. Uh, and they'll be desperately looking for an alternative that speaks English uh, because it's so much easier to do business on in the same language. So I think Malta and Cyprus become quite interesting places to enter the Commonwealth with. And if Gibraltar um, do a, um, a Schengen deal with um, the uh, European Union, which is looking quite likely, then uh, Gibraltar will also tick that box. Uh, of course, the UK will still be a considerable access point because Europe will come to its senses in the end, because ultimately they export twice as much uh, to us as we, uh, as we export to them. But as we have this sort of phony war that's going on uh, between the, uh, the Commission and uh, the governments, the, the British government, there's, there's going to be a problem. I, I'm, I'm afraid to say, and we're still on the record, so I've got to be careful what I say, I don't think the United Kingdom has yet really woken up to its Commonwealth advantage. Um, they're slightly ashamed of um, imperialism or whatever the modern word for um, the British Empire was. Um, I, I don't think that is uh, true. I don't think people look at the United Kingdom anymore as an imperialist uh, country. They, if they do, I, I'm afraid they're looking through the wrong spectacles because it isn't. Uh, we're a very, uh, as you know, um, uh, polyglot um, country now. And um, that is attractive and um, uh, we're a very open economy. So it, it, it's, it's a good place to do business. But um, the UK government have got some crucial things to sort out. One is how do they stop what they endlessly, what the civil service endlessly did, which was gold plating uh, legislation and making ourselves sort of more, um, more sort of um, you know, um, holier than thou, in a sense, in some of our attitudes to um, other countries. Um, uh, approach to business, you know, we have to be more sustainable than anybody else. This sort of approach is not the right approach. That, that, that's a sort of counter approach um, and uh, is dangerous setting their financial services at a bar that is way beyond uh, what the world's competition is doing is wrong. There is currently a bill going through the House of Lords. Uh, it, I'm debating on it tomorrow about animal welfare. Um, you know, humanely killing longestines was one of the suggested, uh, and, and octopus was one of the last suggested items. And this puts the United Kingdom in an over-regulated, non-competitive country. And if you add that to the fact that they haven't really got in their, the, the wind in their sails yet in terms of uh, the Commonwealth and, um, and, uh, and the great opportunity it has, I'm slightly fearful. Hopefully that fear is only because, like every government in the world, they've been completely focused on solving the COVID crisis. Uh, and if that is the case, then good. And I know that we have a Prime Minister who really gets the Commonwealth, but I, I, I fear in the civil service it doesn't. And I fear in the civil service it doesn't quite get uh, nowhere its places in international trade. And I'm sorry to say that, having um, thought it had when obviously I was in government. No, I think, uh, I, I do believe that this, this next uh, meeting could have a far more um, positive impact with regards to trade from Africa to the, the UK on a, on a post Brexit basis. That's a, my personal opinion. I don't know. If totally right. Know. Totally right. Totally right. Yeah, completely right. Yeah. Yannick, I see you back on. You've, you've come online. Are you about to tell me to keep quiet? <laughs> we're, we're running out of time, but if you have a last question, absolutely, please go ahead. <laughs> All right, we're still on trade. The Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement um, and, and, its, and its benefits, I think, having your, your, your feet squarely in the, on the, in the trade area. Um, what are your thoughts with regards to uh, our business communities, the various trade blocks that we have? Because we basically have Southern, 
We have East Africa and we have West Africa as the, the three major trade blocks in sub-Saharan Africa. What is your, 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 your views on, uh, on that? Well, I am very excited about the African Free Trade Agreement, as you can imagine. And uh, obviously it's headquartered in Ghana, um, which, will, which is an open and free trading economy largely. Uh, we completely support anything to do with free trade. Uh, we believe in it. Uh, the Commonwealth should believe in it because it's very exciting for us. And it's well proven that it's, it lifts many countries out of poverty and uh, improves their lifestyle. So uh, we're, we're, we're very excited about it. I think it's a terrific achievement, by the way, to have got uh, this agreement. And I think um, uh, the, the Africa is ready for this, really ready for this now. Well, Marlon, I'm going to, uh, I'll cut it there with, uh, we've got three minutes to the, the, the bottom of the hour. Uh, I'd like to thank you for your, your frank and, and, and open answers. Uh, it's been a pleasure uh, chatting to you this afternoon. Robin, good to talk to you and thank you very much indeed. Really nice to see you. Have a good holiday. Thank you very much. You Yannick, see, over to last you. minute jab, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Robin. Oh, uh, Yannick, you're back from holiday. Good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> mind very much. So just, if you don't mind, we'll take one quick question from the audience, and I'll ask our team to put us so much joining us today and interesting conversation. Uh, Robin, almost so thank you very much for, for moderating this conversation. It was good to have you, and thank you for what your business is doing in the country and uh, with the banking system and everything. Thank, thank you very much for the wonderful work your team is doing. Thank you very much. And, uh, Thank you, everybody. Uh, have, a wonder, have a wonderful evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thanks.